So today I have a workflow for you, uh, for those of you who are using Printify to create products and push that out to different sales channels such as Etsy or uh, Shopify or WooCommerce. And Printify just recently also added the ability to push these products out to an Amazon sales channel as well. So as we're heading into the holidays, uh, a utility that I thought would be hand handy for Printify owners or users would be the ability to update titles and descriptions so that they're more holiday focused. My name is Alex. I'm an AI native workflow automation architect, and this is just an example of some of the solutions I build. First and foremost, we're going to go ahead and update our brand guidelines and also be able to add any custom instructions that you might want. So we have the brand name, the brand tone, and then in the custom instructions, in this case, I said, let's rewrite this for the coming Christmas season. OK, so this is going to be used a little bit later on with our language model. But we want to go ahead and set that in the very beginning so that uh, we have that available for us. Then we jump into Printify where we're going to go and get your shop information and get the list of products that you have available. And then that will split out those products to individual products so that we can loop over those in creating the new title description options. So we have our loop that starts here. And then because the JSON, the product JSON that comes back from Printify is quite large depending on the product. So um, in my case, I have two products. One's just the mug and one's a t-shirt, but the t-shirt I added like, I don't know, like 15 or 20 variations for that shirt. So you can imagine that, J that JSON is going to contain a lot of product information that you don't need to do the title and description. So what we do in this note here, is we're splitting that out by product title, product ID, title, and description so that it's less data that we're working with for the um, generation of the various options, right? So the other thing I've added into this workflow is the ability to set the number of options. So if you have one product and then you wanna see, say, you know, just two options, or you wanna see five options per product for the title and description, you can set that here. Uh, in this case, I've just set it to three so that uh, we get three options per product and I have two products. So we should see six rows in our Google document, Google Sheets document once this is done going through this. And then next we're gonna go ahead and actually generate the title and description. And we've got some little code here to be able to um, calculate the number of options and run through that loop with the OpenAI uh, ChatGPT model to generate the title and description. So this is what these two nodes are doing. It's calculating the number of options. And then I have a Google Sheets document that I'll show you in a little bit that will basically um, be updated and used to manage the title and description options. So we add the initial product into the Google Sheet and then use OpenAI to generate title and description options. So if I open this up, you'll see here we're using the GPT-40 mini model. In this instance, I have a initial user message that says, hey, write an engaging product title and description for this product. Here's the original title and description that you're working with. Um, I've also asked it to define a keyword so that we can try and rank for something. I think I might, I might want to add a keyword field in the initial brand guidelines so that if you already have a keyword that you want to work with, you can instruct the language model to do to use that as the copy update. All right, so it's got some additional information where, hey, this is for Printify. I'm going to publish these products across various sales channels as well as social media. So that's a user message. I also have a assist, couple of assistant messages where, you know, I'm telling it, hey, be witty, humanize the content, no emojis. That's kind of a default prompt I have across pretty much all of the content I'm generating. Um, and then here's the system message. You're an e-commerce master in Excel at creating content for products. 
again, you guys can update this to whatever prompt that you feel might work better or prefer a certain type of system message in terms of identifying the the persona of the individual, right? So um, the next thing here is the brand guidelines that we're pulling in from that first node that we inputted all that information about us, right? So there is that. And then another system message that pulls in the custom instructions from again, that first node. And then finally, another final system message that says, hey, I'll put the keyword title and description. And then here in this node, we have the output structured as JSON so that that is properly formatted. Once those options are generated, um, actually, so before I go on, the, you know, this, this um, <clears throat> message model has access to a few tools, which is Wikipedia and Calculator. You can add additional tools here. You know, NADM makes it super, super easy to add additional tools. So, you know, if you had a different workflow that you want to add to this or have a website that you wanted to browse, you can just, it's like an infinite number of options here that you can add different tools for your AI or language model to work with in generating the content for you, right? So you a lot of options there. And then once it's generated, it's going to update the Google Sheet and I've what I've added here in my um, original product update to Google Sheets is just a, a random unique ID so that this is the ID I'm using to match up the rows, right? So just a little trick for you to be able to have a unique ID for each row to process data in your workflow. So uh, you can see here in the update portion, that we are matching the column, the rows based on the XID, right? So this will pull in that XID from the previous node and then update the outputs from OpenAI and continue to do that. So, all right, so that's what this portion of the workflow does. And then I have a subflow, sub process that if you update a certain column and row within the Google Sheet and you uh, trigger it with the word yes, then what it will do is take that row of data and then push it back up into Printify so that your product is now properly updated. So you had the chance to review the various options and the ones that you like, you wanna actually have it upload back into Printify. And rather than going into the web interface, I've just created a simple mechanism to be able to do that for all from within the Google Sheet. So here we are with the Google Spreadsheet, Google Sheet, right, that uh, has run the workflow. And you can see here, we have our unique identifier. We have the date and time that this was added. We have the keyword for each item, the original title, the title options, are here, so we have three options for the mug, three options for the shirt. Then we have the original description and the new description options, which again, I think, you know, everyone is familiar, works with Google Sheets or Excel <laughs> pretty often, especially if you're a marketer, this is a very common tool that you're gonna be using, right? So in a familiar interface, you'll be able to see the content options for your store and then say, okay, cool, let's go ahead and send this back up into up into Printify. And all you have to do is use this upload column and hit and input the word yes into this. And then it will the workflow will trigger based on that and, and go ahead and uh, upload that back into Printify. So you have your options. You want to send that back into Printify. This is the column to do that in. And, you know, you can see in our product section that this will go ahead and update that accordingly. Relatively simple workflow, but pretty handy in being able to see a variety of options for content and also be able to push that back up into the platform so that you're not having to deal with the manual copy and paste. So right now we're using Printify, but imagine, you know, swapping out Printify for Printful or I don't know what, there's a bunch variety of these types of print on demand platforms, but you could also swap this out with 
let's say WooCommerce or any other, you know, product data set that you might be working with. But this is a handy little tool to be able to do that. So hopefully that helps you as you are preparing your store for the uh, upcoming holiday season. And again, let me know. Well, let me know if you have any questions. I'm available in the comment section or you can find me um, just by searching for Alex K 1919. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time and happy Thanksgiving. Take care guys.